Welcome back, everybody. I think this is going to be a short video. This is mostly just to mostly just to describe a, a little bit of some tricks or potentially confusing things about looking at drawings of amino acid molecules. So on one of the very first slides covering chapter 16, I showed you this and I said, this is a generic amino acid molecule. And I said, the amino acid molecules will always have an amine functional group. They will always have a carboxylic acid functional group. They will always have a carbon in the middle. That carbon in the middle will always have a hydrogen stuck onto it. And then some other stuff will be stuck onto that carbon in the middle as well. And this other stuff makes the amino acid molecules different from each other. The problem with this drawing is that sometimes students can think, oh, okay, every time I see an amino acid, the carboxylic acid part will be pointing to the east. It'll be pointing that way or to the right, I guess. The amine functional group will always be pointing to the left. The hydrogen that's stuck on the carbon in the middle will always be pointing up and the side chain will always be pointing down. It doesn't have to be that way. And it won't be that way on a quiz or a test. I can rotate this thing any way I want and you should still be able to figure out where everything is, right? Here, carboxylic acid is kind of pointing to the northeast. The amine functional group is pointing to the southeast. The R group is pointing in a weird way. But this is still an amino acid, and you should be able to recognize it, even if it's twisted and bent. Right? I can twist and bend it in many different ways. Another thing is that this is especially true in biology textbooks. A lot of times, Instead of drawing this, this is called a carboxylic acid functional group, people will draw carboxylic acid like this. Now, this doesn't look anything like that. It has the one carbon, two oxygens, and a hydrogen, but it doesn't show you the double bond, and it doesn't show you who is connected to whom. But this is done a lot of the time. So the reason that I want, the reason that I'm pointing this out is because sometimes it's just shown to you, and I want to emphasize something. If you ever see the atoms written in this pattern, this is chemistry shorthand for carboxylic acid. It's just easier to write than all of this, so people write it like this. The real reason it's written like this is a financial reason, and that is back a hundred years or so ago when scientists wanted to publish something and they wanted to show a molecule like this, the printers charged a lot of money to put this kind of thing in print, because this is complicated. The printers did not charge so much money if you just wrote all of the letters like this. So the people who were doing this kind of stuff, one of the things they said is, look, we want to save money. As long as we write it this way, as long as everybody's on board, this is always going to mean that the atoms are connected like this. And then we can save a little bit of money, and as long as everybody is clued in, you know that this means carboxylic acid. And it's kind of stuck. There was another chemistry teacher who sometimes teaches at Goodwin who absolutely despises this, but it gets used a lot, so I'm just telling you. Another thing, much earlier in the course I showed you a formula like this, and I said, oh, this is the formula for acetic acid. In the beginning of the course, I said, how many carbons are there? Oh, there are two. How many oxygens? There are two. How many hydrogens? There are four. And this was a cautionary tale. This was me telling you, hey, you have to look at the whole molecule because sometimes the atoms will be spread out like they are here. And I said, well, why, why bother spreading them out? Why do I have to write it like this? Hopefully now that you, you'll see that when you write COOH here, this is telling chemists who have been trained that the C, the O, the O, and the H are connected to each other in a carboxylic acid. You could write CH4O2. That's the same formula as this thing here. But this doesn't tell you that there's a carboxylic acid in there somewhere. Anyway, that's a long-winded way of showing you different ways that the amino acid molecules can be presented. There's one more thing on the next slide. In most liquids, in most water-based liquids, including your cells and other body fluids, the carboxylic acid of the amino acid and the amine functional group of the amino acid are actually charged. And what do I mean by that? This is the amino acid molecule the way that I've been drawing it. In other words, in other words it looks like this. But if you put this molecule into water, most of, the wa most of these molecules will not look like this. The reason is, this is an acid, and if you remember our definition of acids is, acids are able to donate H+. If you put this into water, this H will get donated. It'll fly away. It'll move away. And what will end up happening is, this oxygen, because this H-plus got released, this oxygen will have a negative charge. 
So if you put an amino acid molecule like this, like this, into water, most of the time that H leaves. And so that little part of the molecule has a negative charge. The other thing is that this, this part of the molecule can act like a base. And if you remember what bases do, they can accept H+. So if you put this kind of molecule into water, a lot of times this part will pick up an H+. And it will end up with a third hydrogen. And it will end up with a plus charge. The point I'm trying to make is that sometimes when people draw amino acid molecules in textbooks, they draw them like this. If you look, there's no electrical charge written on any single atom here. But this is not really the most realistic way that the molecules exist in, in your body, in your cells. Usually this H flies off, and usually this part of the molecule picks up another H+. So other times, when people are trying to be more accurate in the way they draw amino acid molecules, they will say, hey, actually, this nitrogen here has a third hydrogen stuck onto it. It has a positive electrical charge. This oxygen here used to have a hydrogen stuck onto it, but that left, and it has a negative electrical charge. And most of the amino acid molecules in your body are like this. But sometimes they're drawn like this, which is how I drew it at the beginning. Sometimes they're drawn like this, which is slightly more realistic. You don't need to know this word. That's a German word that it has to do with the electrical charges here, but don't worry about it. If you were paying close attention, and you might not have been paying close attention, if you were paying close attention when I showed you the 20 universal amino acid molecules, you'll notice that they were drawn with the electrical charges. Right? They had the hydrogen leave there and give you a negative charge. They had the third hydrogen stick onto this nitrogen here, and you can see the positive electrical charge. Your book is trying to draw the amino acids in the, the more realistic way. So you should be aware that sometimes it will be drawn like this, and sometimes it will be drawn with the charges. And I think that's the end of this video.